Hey guys, Caleb here with DSLR Video Shooter and welcome back to another video. It's been a little while, took a little bit of a break, but jumping here into 2020, I thought it'd be kind of fun to kick things off by breaking down a whole bunch of things I've learned when it comes to saving money and buying gear. I'll have a ton of information down in the description, including timestamps. And what we'll do is go through a whole bunch of tools and tricks and methods I use uh, when I'm researching for a video, trying to find equipment, trying to save on that equipment. And then we'll also go through websites like Amazon, eBay, etc., and I'll show you exactly how I go about buying gear and trying to save money. So let's kick things off by talking about gray market and international purchases. So there's some pros and cons to going with an international version of a camera or a gray market. First and foremost, this gear is totally legit. It's not fake. It's not someone trying to make a fake Canon camera. It's a real Canon camera, but instead of coming from Canon USA, in my case, it would be coming from overseas directly. So that comes with a couple of problems. First and foremost, often the camera won't have the same, you know, manual and things won't be in English. I might get weird plugs that aren't, you know, a US standard. Another issue might be warranties. If you try to send an international or gray market camera to Canon USA to get service, they're probably not going to go anywhere near that camera or you're going to have to pay a lot more to get that camera worked on. So that's kind of the cons. The pros are often this equipment is much more affordable because it's not going through all these traditional channels where there's cost involved in markup. You can often save a lot of money. It's harder to find these deals these days with everything going on in the world, but something to keep in mind when it comes to whether or not you should actually purchase a gray market camera or not. I've done it a lot in the past. It's totally legal. There's nothing wrong with doing that, but I always avoid purchasing purchasing something really expensive on the great market. So if I'm buying a $600 camera, I don't really have a problem with that, but I'm not going to go out and spend, you know, $6,000 on a cinema camera that is great market. I'm going to stick with the traditional channels so I know I can get it serviced. Next up, we're going to talk about refurbished equipment. So companies like Apple and Canon uh, offer a great way to save money on equipment and that's to buy refurbished. So often what happens is stuff is returned or sent back to uh, these companies. They inspect them, they replace and repair them. Them, uh, and then test them. So it's a really safe way to save a couple bucks, uh, but have a product that has been certified and tested and that works. Recently, Amazon has started to offer renewed products, which is essentially refurbished stuff as well. But I would be wary of that because it's not nearly as well tested and certified as stuff you would get from a reputable company like, you know, Canon or Apple. I'm personally a huge fan of buying refurbished stuff. I've purchased a ton of Apple products over the years for the business here. A lot of those have been refurbished as well as a bunch of stuff from Canon when it comes to cameras and lenses. So those reputable companies that you know it's been tested and certified, two thumbs up. It's a great way to save money. I'll have links to both websites down below. But when it comes to stuff like Amazon, if it's kind of on the lower end cost wise, you're going to be saving a ton of money. I would recommend looking into it. But keep in mind, that's not going to be as well tested as something like from Canon. Another great tip is to use price checkers when looking for new or used gear. A couple great ways to do this is to use sites like Boca Market, which is a great place where you can enter a camera or lens and see what prices are both new and used. One of my favorite sites is Camel Camel Camel, which is a funny name, but it's a great way to check prices over time. And you can even set up alerts to get notified when the price drops to a certain level. And then of course, you can use sites like eBay to check completed or sold listings. More on that in a little bit. Now let's talk about buying used gear. We're going to have a separate section specifically designated for eBay later in the video, but I kind of want to do some broad strokes when it comes to buying used gear. If you're looking for something where there's several options, for instance, a C stand or a tripod or a microphone, I often will look for older pro versions of what I need instead of buying something new that's more prosumer. Professional high-end gear used holds up great. It's designed to last. So that's a great way to go. You can often get something really sweet uh, around the same price, but it's going to last you even longer even though you purchased it used. Another thing you should probably do when you're purchasing used is to make sure the thing you're buying isn't stolen. There's a bunch of websites out there that allow you to enter the serial number and see if it has been stolen. So this is a great way to A, make sure you're not purchasing something that you shouldn't and that belongs to someone else and also help that person figure out where their camera or lens is. Another huge factor when buying gear and trying to save money 
is to have patience. Now I know we get the email from B&H or whatever website or news site saying the new best camera came out, you need to buy now, here's the link. But often you can save so much money if you just wait a little bit. For example, if you look at Canon's pricing history, often within sometimes less than a year, there are dramatic price cuts on their cameras. So if you look at something that came out brand new versus a couple years later, there's so much of a difference there. So if you're on a budget, it might be worth buying something slightly older versus trying to get the newest best thing right now. Same goes when you're buying used. I often set up eBay alerts for different things that come up because every once in a while you'll find that guy who's just trying to get rid of his kit and you can swoop in and pick up the camera for much, much lower than just buying one today. Another important thing to consider when purchasing gear is to not overspend or purchase things you don't need. This is going to be an awful exercise, but I'd recommend you do it. Go look at your recent purchases, tally up all the little stuff in the last, I don't know, six months, and see what the total is when it comes to what you spent. It's insane how much of those little purchases in life add up. And if you combine them together, that could have been maybe another lens or a complete camera if you had just not bought, you know, 20 meh items and you would save that for something super great. All right, so now let's get to specific websites, talk about some recommendations, some hacks, some things that are really helpful when shopping for gear and trying to save some money. And we're going to start by talking about Amazon. I love Amazon. It's one of my favorite ways to acquire gear, not only because it's super convenient, but also because of the algorithm that Amazon uses. It's a great way to find items that you don't know exactly what you're looking for, but you have a problem you need solved. And my favorite thing about Amazon is when you scroll down and those few sections near the bottom where it says something like other people looked into these products uh, or related items, that is a great way to dial in and find the exact item you're looking for. And then even Amazon will often show you similar items or the same item for even less. So it's a great way uh, to do research. Almost all of my crazy builds where I do everything on one light stand is using this technique to dial down to find the most affordable but best option for a particular problem I have. Now let's talk about eBay. eBay is by far my favorite place to purchase used equipment and there's definitely a couple ways you can take advantage of that website. I would highly suggest you always do two things at least. Number one, check the rating of the seller to make sure they're not some scam artist and read a couple reviews. And number two, make sure when you purchase something, especially if it's, let's say, over a couple hundred dollars, that there is a return policy, whether that be three to five days, 30 days, whatever. You want to make sure you're able to send something back if it's broken, if it's wrong and completely not the thing you ordered. So those are my two number one tips is to make sure those two things are in place. And then there's some advanced stuff you can do. One of my favorites is to search for something I want to purchase. And if I'm not sure what I'm looking at with pricing, I'll go into the advanced search options and I'll check either completed listing or sold listings. Then when you hit search, you'll be able to see what things went for. And what's great about this is you can see what people purchase things for, what the kind of average buy now price is or you can see what kind of deals people have gotten when they bid. And that leads me to my next tip, which is to bid on things. Often in our kind of Amazon Prime brains, we just wanna buy something and have it sent to us. We don't wanna bid, we don't wanna mess around with any of that stuff. But I cannot tell you how many times I've scored an amazing deal just by throwing in a bid. For example, I've been searching for an old Mole Richardson light forever, and these things are really, really expensive. And one day I saw one on eBay, no one had bid, had three days left. And just for the kicks of it, I threw in a bid at the lowest option available. Three days went by and I won it. So you never know when you're gonna kind of slip in there and be able to purchase something for very affordable. So, you know, if you have the time, try doing a couple bids and see if you can score a deal before you go buy it on Amazon or you just do the typical buy now thing on eBay. Also, a couple other things to consider when purchasing. If you're looking for a camera, make sure you check the serial number, make sure it's not stolen. Try to get the seller to let you know what the actual shutter count is on the camera. When it comes to lenses, don't be fooled by beautiful pictures of vintage lenses. Make sure you pay very close attention. Ask and read about haze or fungus on the lens. Uh, just things you want to pay attention to. And of course, like I talked about before, make sure you can return that thing if it's a dud. Next up, we have B&H Photo Video, which is one of my favorite ways to purchase gear because 
it is super legit. So there's no games, there's no gray market. Also, B&H is the best place to purchase pre-orders. So if you're trying to get a camera quickly, if you're early to a pre-order on B&H, you're gonna be one of the first people to get it shipped to you. Whereas in the past, I've pre-ordered on Amazon, even though I've been refreshing the page for you know 25 minutes, uh, and it'll take you know a month if there are a whole bunch of people pre-ordering. So if you wanna pre-order something and get it really quickly, B&H is phenomenal for that. Something else to keep in mind with B&H is their deal zone. They have every single day deals going on. Often there's multiple products on sale and there's some legit stuff in there. I've seen uh, small HD production monitors like almost half off or just crazy numbers. Uh, so definitely check out the deal zone over at B&H. They're not paying me to say that. I just really enjoy that list because I'll have a couple items I need, but you know, it's not pressing. And then I'll see, you know, the email come through and it's half off or something crazy. So love deal zone on b &H. Of course, there are other places online where you can look for used or new equipment, including Facebook Marketplace, Craigslist, forums are a great way to go to. You can find things like Red's Forum, uh, where there's a lot of used gear for sale. Uh, those take a lot more time, and depending on where you live, they might not be as good a resource as something like eBay, but if you live in a big city, that might be something to check out, and you'll never know what you find there. And then, of course, we have Google, which is really handy, especially their image search, when you're trying to find something. So often, a lot of us need a gripping solution, and we can't figure out what it's called or you know what the best option is. And I cannot tell you how many times I just started searching in Google Images for the problem I was having, and I found you know nine other solutions that were 10 times better than what I was imagining. So uh, Google Images, great way to find gear that you maybe don't know exists. So I know that was a ton of information, but those are just a couple things I was thinking about when it comes to buying gear, trying to save money. I've been doing this for a long time, and some of these items, when I discovered them, just made a huge difference. So hopefully you picked up a thing or two out of this video, and if you have any recommendations for saving a few dollars or a couple tools that you use, when purchasing gear online. I'd love to hear from you. So that's gonna do it for me and this video. I wanna thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day and we will see you in the next video.